Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Emerald the Quilter, and today I'm tackling two big projects in my sewing room. The first one is right here. This top drawer in my little cabinet is hard to open and close, and it has a lot of my sewing notions, some leftover blocks, and random things in there that I need to organize and clean out. The rest of this cabinet here has my scraps, so I'm not sure that I'll have time to go through those today, but in the future, I definitely will do that. The second project I'm gonna tackle is my closet. And if you saw my last video, the closet is gonna take the most amount of time. So if you are working on a project or you are also cleaning your sewing room, join me. I'm gonna put on a little bit of music, talk about some things, and then watch to the end to see some of the projects that I've been working on. Here is my drawer. It is a disaster everything is going to fall out so let's take a closer look at this so you can see that there is nothing really visible underneath this mess i have this is like um sticky board that i use for finishing my cross stitch it has once this side here you peel it off and um you can stick like your fabric or your cross cross stitch fabric to it fusible cross stitch patterns, some labels that I have prepared. These quilts are actually um, in my whip basket. Sew in Love foundation paper. These are the command strips, more fusible. So I'm going to just move this aside and start making piles. So I've got patterns, extra accessories. These are like unopened pieces. This is for, um, these are for making a uh, bias tape and this too. A Jerry's Jelly Roll jig, which I have the, um, the pattern to and actually the batting for it. Alaska quilt ruler, the binding tool, and you know I have a lot of templates in here so I can start keeping these together. More of that sticky board. A template I made for the dot 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 quilt that I have not finished yet. That's going to go there. An extra wheel for my sweet ride. More fusible webbing. And yes, I am saving those pieces. Command strip hooks. This is for leftover log cabin blocks that I ended up not needing. So that's going to go into my scrap bin. And I'm just going to keep this little clip. I'll probably use this for something one day, so I'm gonna keep that. These are the Alaska templates. So I actually made the Alaska quilt before, like a year, maybe two, before the Alaska ruler ever came out. So I have both. Pineapple foundation paper, which I plan to make a scrappy quilt with one day. So that's probably gonna go with these, right? Since they're foundation paper, they should go together. This is um, label paper. It's like a, um, so it's by June Taylor. And this is the an example of like a label that I made. You can use your household printer to you know, use a Word document, print it, let it sit for 20 minutes, and then there is some fusible on here you can take off and make your own labels. So these, I've never used them before and I just keep saving them because sometimes I only print one label at a time. I know it's wasteful, but then when I print multiple, you know, this is what ends up happening. I've got four, the quilts, they're still not ready for backing and, I'm gonna put them off to the side for now. This is 
for bunting. I don't need that anymore. Masks, trash, and cross stitch needles. So save that. See, and here are some log cabin blocks that I have left over. And I just don't know where to put them because it's only a few. Maybe they should go back in here. You know, I don't know. I'll put that off to the side. This is what I used as a um, sleeve. And then I like put pins all along the back of the quilt. I pinned it to the backing so that it wouldn't show on the front. It's quite long and it worked out okay, but I ended up taking it off. So I don't think I'll ever do that again because it's just tedious and it's nicer to have a permanent sleeve on the back of the quilt. So this is definitely going into my scraps. Here is a Dresden ruler or template, a wedge template. So this is going to go with the other rulers and templates. Triangle paper, some more fusible webbing, triangle paper. Hmm, I'm going to put it in its own little pile. These are charms, English piecing shapes, the hexagons that I have. These go with, um, these are the perfect size for one of the patterns in the Pillow Talk book by Edita Sitar of Laundry Basket Quilts, which I will make one day. So that is going to go with the paper. Here are two remaining log cabin blocks. I'm keeping those. These are dowel caps because I have a quilt hanging in my son's nursery that has a rod and these dowel caps and just came in a package. So I have those extra bias tape. Probably should go with my ribbon. This is the Perfect 10 ruler. Yes, I have the um, Perfect 10 quilts book. And if you've been following along with my other series of videos, the perfect five quilts, you know that I am making a lot of progress on that. These are the seamstress templates and I have the quilt for that. Some leftover dots. Command strip pieces. Another mask template that can go in the trash that tells you how long <laughs> It's been since I've cleaned this because I was making masks in 2020, 2021, and it's 2023 now. So more scraps. Save that clip. This is the tiniest piece, piece of, um, what's it called? Heat and bond. I don't think I'm going to keep that. It's trash. Post-it notes. That can go in my desk drawer. More command strip hooks. My... Scissors, these are that kind that can give you a perforated edge. This is probably from a toy of my son's. I don't need those. Those are like the protection pieces that um, keep the toys attached to their packaging. Trash. <laughs> Another ruler. Oh, look, there's so many more dots to make it. Another quilt with those. And they're still sorted by color, so I should probably keep those like that. Here are more scraps. Fusible. Oh, I know what this is. This is from the Patches of Blue book. This is the sleigh from one of the patterns there. So I had, I think I had intended on making like, what was it called? The sampler where it was one block from each pattern in that book. And I had traced this out, but then I never pursued it. I'm going to keep it. 
because I might still do that one day, a spoon, which I use to, <laughs> I scoop uh, dried up cold wax from my Scentsy with the spoon. So I need that here in my sewing room, but probably just not um, in this drawer. Random paper clip, an extra piece of a twig that was from my show quilt that can go in the trash. Quilt backyardage. Oh, this is like a, um, a cheat sheet. So this is Country Cottage Fabrics. This is their card. And this is a really nice quilt back cheat sheet. So I'm gonna keep that. Charms. More bias tape. And more dots. Another template. Another hexagon template. And another piece of scrap. Some matches. Oh, I know why I have these matches. So I use these matches to burn the ends of ribbon. That way the ribbon, even when you cut it at, at a diagonal and leave a point at the end, it can still fray. And so by burning and melting the edges, it stops it from doing it and gives it a professional finish. So that's what those are for. What is this? Some kind of tape. I don't know what kind of tape this is. Set it to the side. Frixon pen, a normal pen, another Frixon pen, and a cute little doggy bone template. Never used it before. I think it came free with something. So, yay, this is now empty. I've thrown a few little things away, and I'm going to clean it up now. What's most important is that, for me, that I keep my rulers all together in here. So I'm gonna start with the biggest one, which is the perfect 10 ruler. Then this nine and a half inch one. I don't have like a separate place in my sewing room to keep these. So I'm just gonna keep them, continue to keep them in here. And I don't think I'm ever going to need these dot, dot, dot templates. So, and plus I have the pattern still. So if I ever need to remake them, I can do that. So that's just one more thing I can throw away. And it was made out of like, um, I think it was like a cereal box type of material or a tissue box type of material. It's been so long. So my rulers, my binding tool, which I didn't even buy for binding. I bought it for a pattern. That's funny. Okay, so those are all, oh, little bone. Those are my templates. They're gonna stay on this side. And this, these cross stitch patterns, they're gonna have to go because I need this to be more like tools. Um, this bias tape is gonna need a new home. These command strips. I don't even, here's the box, they fell out. So I'm gonna put those back in here. Just like that. And wish I had like a hair tie to, should I use this tape? Is there something special about this tape? I don't know. Seems like fancy tape. I'm gonna, Close it up like this. Okay, and that is going to go in my desk drawer. These, um, I don't know that I'll ever finish something this small, and I have more of it. So I'm more likely definitely to, you know, make an itty bitty little cross stitch pillow or ornament with this, but not like a decorative wall hanging type thing. So these are gonna go in the trash. I think I will put this with, hmm, hard to say. I'm gonna just keep these together for now. 
Then I have these bias tape tools. I'm gonna to keep them in their packaging because it has the description and some instructions and I don't wanna open them until I'm ready. This one as well. These are gonna to have to go into my laundry basket quilts drawer, which I do have a scrap bin, scrap drawer, just for fabrics of laundry basket quilts. So these are gonna go in there. This little wheel applique piece is trash. These I think are gonna go, hmm, maybe I'll roll them up and I'll put them inside the heat and bond little packaging because I still have it. It just I just need to like squeeze it in there, roll it up and then squeeze it into the tube. So I'll do that. These labels, well, they have to go in here. So I'll just put them back. These I also need to keep because I can definitely hang more quilts and have a decorative touch at the end of the rods. I'm gonna put the tape back in here. The pens don't need to go in there. Post-it notes can go in my desk. The spoon can go in my desk because I actually have my little candle. My It's not a candle, it's a wax heater, like a Scentsy um, at my desk. So this is gonna go there. These I can roll up and put them into the tube of my triangle paper rolls. And these are gonna come back in here in my little cheat sheet. So now it's just these two because everything else has a home. This is also a tool. And I think I will just keep them in there. And there's so much more space. There's, it's so clean now. There's like easily two inches from the top to the top of the highest item easily. And this is gonna go in and out of my, my cabinet and I can see everything that I have now. So if you have not cleaned out your notions or your junk drawer in your sewing room, I highly recommend doing it because now I can access everything. It feels so good to finally clean out my notions drawer and I conquered three of my clips. So I've got those back. These are handy for binding and anytime you need to hold something together but you don't want to use pins, they're great. Then I brought out my patches of blue book because I'm going to show you how I'm going to store this. I had completely forgotten that I had it and it would be nice if it stayed a little bit flatter this time. So I'm folding it, not really in any particular way, but just small enough to stay um, inside the book. It's smaller than the pages. And I'm gonna use this paper clip that I had from the drawer. And here is, oh, look. Sleigh Bells Duo. And I, I've actually made both of these um, table runners. So that is gonna go right in here. And even though I might forget again that it's here, it'll be a wonderful surprise the day I decide to make the sampler version of the Patches of Blue quilt. So that's going back in the bookshelf. And now it's time to tackle the closet. So come and join me in cleaning out my closet. I have so many different things in there. The first thing I need to do is get out a lot of the larger items, including the vacuum. I have things on all the shelves, on the floor, and I can't even like fully walk around in there and it's a walk-in closet. I have crochet items, different types of arts and crafts, um, such as scrapbook making. Um, I know I have a lot of crochet um, yarn, crochet needles, a few knitting needles. I have lots of baskets in there, memorabilia, and decorations. So. There's just a variety of things in my closet and 
I have um, also like some pillows, an old quilt. The first thing I need to do is try to take as much of the larger items out as possible. So what you see me um, putting in a bag right now is the extension table that goes to my large baby lock machines. And that is what I use for free motion quilting. And I'm just trying to keep it protected because it's made of plexiglass and then the elbow attachment as well. I know that um, cleaning all of this out is going to take a long time. So I try to get the boxes, the containers um, in front of me in a way that's accessible so that I can, that gray container, I can put what I'm gonna donate and the little plastic box I'm going to put, um, I end up putting ribbon in there. So I have lots of like baskets that are gift basket types of things or Easter baskets. And because they don't have a lid, they're not very practical to keep any of my arts and crafts supplies in. So this plastic, uh, container on the left there on the floor with the lid is much more appropriate so I do end up putting my ribbon in there in a little bit more organized fashion. You'll see that I put a lot of things in the donation container. That quilt that I put in there was actually given to me by somebody. It looked like a quilt that was a store-bought quilt. It was ripped, it had a smell to it, it had a tag to it, and I really had no use for it at all. Um, and it had just been in my closet for years. So someone gave it to me because I thought I might like it, but um, it was um, damaged and wasn't my style. I didn't really know what to do with it. so. A lot of the things that I end up donating are like old books that I had read that I don't intend on ever reading again. Um, they're probably at least like 10 years old because many of the books that I end up donating were back from my college days. And some other things that I end up donating are like really really old craft supplies that some of them had also been given to me and I just never use them so, so it's kind of funny because as a maker people know your friends and family know that you like to work with arts and craft supplies and so sometimes you're gifted things that you would never buy yourself and you accept them because that's the nice thing to do but um, they just take up space and they collect dust and I'm sure that many of those things are gonna make someone else much happier. So you can also see that in the right corner there is a stack of bags. Most of those bags are from the Quilters Emporium and just to give you an idea in how much I invest in my quilting hobby in order to get one of those bags, you need to spend at least $100. And so almost every time I go, that's about how much I end up spending. So I have a lot of those bags and I save them and um, I use them for storing projects. Um, and somehow I always forget to take them to the grocery store. I should probably take them downstairs, but I do put projects in them and then I, when I'm done with the project, I put the empty bag back into the closet. So that's what that very large stack of bags is. I will later put all of the bags into another bag. And that quilt that you see there, it looks like a wedding ring quilt. It is actually my paternal grandmother's. It was her favorite, um, bedding and it's not um like an actual quilt it's just a it's just printed on so it's the design printed on one fabric to look like a quilt but my dad insisted that i have it 
because it was her favorite and he thought I could do something with it. So I've had it for a while. Um, it's unfortunately when it was given to me, it had already um, pretty much deteriorated in multiple spots. It was thinned, the batting was exposed, so much of the fabric had just like disappeared. There were tears um, and this, a large stain in the middle. So I washed it delicately a couple of times and um, later, I will take some pictures of it because I would like to not do something with that quilt because it's too damaged to repurpose it, but see, and there it is, so you can get a better look at it, but I would like to maybe replicate it one day. So I end up setting that one aside for that purpose, and before I go any further, I just wanted to like share what I had to work with. You can see everything is everywhere. There's not really like any organized fashion going on in there. So I have to go through every single box, every single basket, every single corner, and then decide what am I donating? What am I keeping? Where is it going? What's trash? And actually I was surprised by how much trash I had. So there were some old like tools that were rusted and I had to throw those away because they would not even like open or close anymore. So they were just stuck. And I found old receipts, old construction paper that had been faded and I mean, you can't use faded construction paper because it gets really brittle. So I don't know how old those papers were. So those just went into the trash bag. Plastic containers, um, I think I throw away like some kind of old shoe box, but it's like actual trash in the closet or things that had just gone bad. So that's what I threw away. And I just sort of take my time. I find pictures scattered everywhere and, and then I try to put the pictures together. And this actually took me two separate nights to work on. Um, I tried to get them all done in one night, but it was just too long and um, I had to stop and get some rest. So. You will notice that I'm wearing different socks, but everything else is the same outfit later in this video. Um, but yeah, see, th those are some books I had read a long time ago, and those are going to go make someone else happy. So I'm going to um, put a little bit of music on so that maybe you can work on a space in your sewing room too, or work on your projects, and I will come back on to explain a few things here and there.
So here I am finding a basket of scraps. Those scraps are mostly leftovers from masks that I was making in 2020, 2021. And they just stayed in that basket and I will have to add them to my scrap bins if they fit. That quilt top is a pillowcase that is completely done. It's a pretty material made of canvas and the fabric is from Hobby Lobby. I don't know why I never finished it, but it's been tucked away in there for years, literally years. So it's time for me to finish that. I will probably use my brand new walking foot because it's so easy and it's such a small project, it'll work out great. And I know I have the actual batting that fits for that um, pillowcase quilt top. So I'll pull that out in a moment, you'll see it. And as I continue cleaning, there it is, there's the batting. As I continue cleaning, I find even more fabric. So I find scraps, I find cutaways, I find um, an entire collection, and I just, find lots of treasures. So you'll notice that um, like I tend to keep my fabrics in some kind of bin or some kind of container. So that wooden basket had the scraps and then in a moment you're gonna see that I bring out some fig tree boxes. So I believe two of my fig tree boxes were damaged and the other two they had fabric in them. So. A few years ago, I was a subscriber to the Fig Tree Quarterly Club. It was like a seasonal thing where um, once a season, Fig Tree would send you a beautiful box with a kit and some goodies in it, and it was all season themed. So in one, I know I have the cutaways and half square triangles from my Shine On project, the sampler quilt and in the other so see that one there and it has a pretty sticker but you can't really peel the stickers off that one was damaged and so that one went in the trash and in the other box i have a entire collection of fabric that i know i had set aside because there were some patterns from the quilts and more magazine that were going to be perfect so there they are those are the half square triangles they're all different fabrics with different sizes and so they just stay together. So lots of fabrics, lots of goodies, lots of treasures. I know later on I find even more fabric and isn't that funny you think that um, you've accounted for all of your fabric and then you start cleaning and doing a deep cleaning and cleaning more and more and more and you just find more fabric. My closet is such a mess that in this shoebox here, I have supplies from all kinds of crafts. So 
crochet, cross stitch, quilting, a rusty hammer, and there's itty bitty pieces like jingle bells at the bottom of that box that I can hear. And I have to go through all of those items one at a time and then see where it goes and what needs to be trashed. In this awkwardly shaped basket, I have another Christmas stocking pattern that I did not know I had two of. And so that one is going to be hung next to the one that's currently hanging on my curtains and other paper patterns for cross stitch and sewing projects. So a lot of these were given to me and they're mostly baby themed. So there are a few 
that um, I don't keep so I put them in the donation box only because they have like a very coarse fabric or the pattern after getting a better look at it is incomplete um, and I think there's a couple there that I um, just don't ever see myself sewing so I put them in the donation box but the rest I keep and that one the animal ABCs is so cute I definitely have to make that and see if the thread is still good so these are very old they were gifted to me they used to belong to that person's mom and so um, the patterns are of course in great condition but I will have to check on the thread and make sure that they're gonna be okay to cross stitch with so that basket is just all kinds of goodies and I do end up keeping most of them
At this point, I've made a lot of progress. You can see that my donation container is like halfway full. My ribbons and other quilty knickknacks are off to the side on top of that clear container. I've sorted, separated some things um, together and I'm clearing a lot of the shelving. So making space for the way that I want to actually organize things and I'm trying to keep as much as similar crafting supplies together as possible.
I've made a lot of progress. I've got my crochet and sewing patterns in one basket. I have like um, some more crafty items put together and it's coming along. So I'm going through a lot of the smaller items one at a time now and that's actually gonna take me quite a while. I'm going to, at some point, have to take them over to the table.
everything is on the table now and you can see that there's a random Barbie that is the millennial Barbie that yes I took out of the box and I played with her I was not one to keep any kind of Barbie collectible or not in the box as a kid so I thoroughly enjoyed that Barbie and she's just um, going to have to find a new home probably with the other Barbies that I have in, in the closet downstairs. So I am saving those for whatever reason, but she's in pretty good condition. And I take a lot of time to use this basket now for some other like sewing knickknacks, quilting knickknacks that um, they do not need to go into my drawer that I cleaned out earlier because I don't use them as often and some of those things that you saw me put in there are like larger zippers that have packaging around them and I actually have some like pencil boxes with zippers but because they do not have packaging they're just loose they fit in my little pe pencil boxes so those package zippers are going into that basket and that is an empty no it must have had my glasses so those glasses I wore in high school those are my Vera Bradley glasses and I end up keeping those but there on the right corner in the front those are more scraps that I found so I find lots and lots of fabric in the closet those that I'm holding in my hand are seven inch Dresden cuts I had already sewn them and they were just in that Easter basket so I take a lot of time going through all of these little things on the table that you see here and I try my best to organize them in, in a way that I will actually remember what it is that I have when I go into the closet.
have now finished cleaning and organizing my closet. It is so much better than what it was. My memorabilia, my photographs, they are together. My photo albums, certain crafts are together. Um, I do put a lot of the like scrap fabric back into the closet, but it's visible. So I know it's there and when I'm ready, I can access it and organize it into my scrap bins if I want to. So that took a very long time, but I'm pleased with it. The best thing is that I can actually walk in and um, when I take out that vacuum and those rolling carts for the sewing machines, it's completely accessible. Like I can walk in into all corners of that closet. So, yay! Here are two trash bags. The large one I started with, which is filled with random, crusty, rusted things, papers, just trash. And here's from my basket that I use to throw away things while I'm sewing that also managed to fill up. So all of this is going away. The container you saw, I've already taken it downstairs. It's going to be donated. And all of that cleaning, took just about three hours and I'm tired. In the morning, I'm gonna have to vacuum because it created a lot of dust everywhere. My eyes are itchy. It's been a long time since I've taken everything out and put it back in. And actually, the top shelves, I didn't even touch those because those were pretty much the way that I want them to stay. But it was still, nonetheless, a lot of work. And I'm so happy that now I can walk in and get what I need and I know what I have. So now finally I can share with you the whips that I've been working on. This is my scrappy lady tulip blocks that I have laid out. They're organized in their rows and this is the sashing that I picked out. It's sort of a very dark tan stone color, very earthy, and it provides just enough contrast to these blocks that just to bring them forward. And so I'm really loving it. I'm having trouble finding a blue cornerstone, so I'm gonna have to keep on looking. I've looked through my scraps and some of my fat quarters and I'm not quite happy with anything yet. I may have to branch out and buy something, but I do wanna take my time with it because it is a lot of work. Another, whip that I have, I'm gonna bring the camera down here so you can see is my son's Easter basket. So this is how it's going. This is the base. The white is on the top. The blue is on the bottom and I've got it stuffed. I need to close this here. And one bunny, I started fluffing it stuffing it and then I will close it. Each bunny gets a ribbon around its neck and they come in these colors, blue, pink, mint, here's another yellow, and lavender. So that is adorable. And finally, I was able to head on over to Hobby Lobby to prepare what I needed for my Milk and Cream Company cross stitch. So I found, I was looking for an 18 inch cross stitch um, fabric, but all I had, all I was able to find was 14. So this is called um, Artiste 14 Rustica Ada, and it's the color oatmeal. So I'm going with this color, and even though the, um, the pattern calls for 36 count, I was hoping that 18 would be, you know, right there at the half mark because the pattern calls to stitch over two, and if I'm going half the, um, I guess these little points per inch, then it would equal to the same finished size, but it didn't work out that way, and that's okay. 
These are the colors that I picked out from Lori's pre-approved cross stitch patterns. These are Lori Holt's Happy Floss Colors. And I did buy an extra white at Hobby Lobby. And then I bought this color for the skin of the lady in the cross stitch pattern. And then these two, I did follow the pattern because they're part of her skirt and I wanted to get those just right. I did not have any anything close at all in Lori Holt's colors to this. So I just went and got the called for colors. And then these to fix a stool that I have. So let me get that stool. Here is the stool that I have. I've had this maybe 10 years. I got it at Ross when I was in college and it's all torn up. It got torn up by my cat. So when my cat was a lot younger, he loved to tear at this with his claws and it needs some love. And I have more fabric of the pink and white stripe that I use for my curtains. You may have seen those in some of my videos or pictures on Instagram. And so I'm going to use these pins instead of a staple gun because the staple gun scares me. I'm going to use these pin to pin the fabric in place at the bottom and then decorate with ribbon along the wooden base. So that's going to come out super cute and it's going to be nicely refurbished. And the last project I have to share with you is the Country Bunnies pattern, which I have decided is going to be the quilt pattern I use to make for our new baby on the way, not my baby, in the family. And this is the fabric that I've decided to use. So this is from Fig Tree. It's one of the older lines from Scarlet and Sage, I believe is what it was called. This is another one of those pretty blues and browns from the same collection. And then I came across this green. So that's where I'm at so far. I'm definitely going to go with these scrappy backgrounds and probably do two bunnies, so two up, two down, so four total, and see how big that is, maybe add some border but I am going to begin cutting this up. So those were the whips I wanted to share with you today, and I hope you got some cleaning done like I did, and if not, that it inspires you to clean and possibly find some treasures just like me. Here I have a spring bunny wreath and a bunny I had made a few years ago. I know for sure that I did not bring these out last year, so this year I can decorate them and I know that my son, he will enjoy them. So thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Remember to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.